12 Most Incredible Flying Cars You Won't Believe They Actually Built There is an understandable skepticism around the entire concept of flying cars and their widespread deployment. Nonetheless, the technology is at an embryonic stage and major industry players such as Aeromobile, Airbus SE, Amazon.com, Inc., Uber are striving to achieve breakthroughs in the field. Yet, they got no luck. But in prior antiquity era, when technology was not as advanced as today, some ambitious human souls dreamt of the impossible. They were often recognized as mad geniuses, and they had come up with some cool inventions that changed our perception of conventional cars forever. Some of them even succeeded for a bit, but ended up failing. But their courage indeed deserves a huge round of applause. Today we're going to reveal 12 most incredible flying cars you won't believe they actually built. Number 12. The 1917 Curtis Autoplane The Curtis Autoplane, invented by Glenn Curtis in 1917, considered to be the first approach to develop a rotable aircraft. The airplane Curtis developed quickly for exhibiting at the Pan American Aeronautic Exposition in February 1917. The design consisted of a set of standard Curtis Model L triplane wings filled to an aluminum body three-seater motor car designed and built by Curtis. A 100 horsepower Curtis engine drove the propeller via shaft and belts. The aircraft had a four-wheeled undercarriage with the front two wheels being steerable. The wings and tail could be detached for use as an automobile. The unique feature of the autoplane was that the wings and tail could be removed as a unit to permit the car component to operate as a conventional road vehicle. The autoplane is reported to have made only a few short units before the development was abandoned when the U.S. approached into the First World War. Number 11. The 1923 Pitcairn PCA-2 the Pitcairn PCA-2 was an autogyro developed in the United States in the early 1930s. Harold F. Pitcairn's first autogyro designed the vehicle intended for commercial use. It possessed a conventional design for that time, an airplane with two open cockpits in tandem and an engine installed tractor fashion in the nose. The lift by the four-blade main rotor was augmented by stubby, low-set monoplane wings that also carried the control surfaces. The wingtips acted as winglets adding stability. The PCA-2 was the first rotary wing aircraft to achieve certification in the United States and was used in a number of high-profile activities, including a landing on the White House lawn and the first flight across the United States in a rotorcraft. In 1931, the Detroit News made history when it bought a PCA-2 for use as a news aircraft due to its ability to fly well at low altitude, land, and take off from restricted spaces. Number 10. The 1937 Waterman Aerobill Waldo Waterman was the first American to make a true flying car. The prototype in 1932 named Watsit for his unconventional design, opened the way for the Aerobill in 1935 designed and built for a contest announced by the U.S. Department of Commerce. The Watsit also featured a wing-mounted tricycle undercarriage and a trim four-plane, and it was powered by a 100-horsepower Kenner K5 five-cylinder radial pusher engine. The aeroplane was not intended for production or to be rotable, but its success in the vital competition encouraged Waterman to form the Waterman Aeroplane Company in 1935 for the production of a rotable version. The resulting aerobill, referred to by Waterman as the W-5, was similar both structurally and aerodynamically to the aeroplane, though the fins differed in shape with rounded leading edges and swept back rudder hinges. Waterman modified a six-cylinder upright 100-horsepower Studebaker to build this flying car in 1937. Only five aerobills were produced, though Waldo Waterman attempted to manufacture rotable versions throughout the 40s and 50s. Number 9. The 1947 Convair Car Model 118 Volte aircraft later became Convair and was seeking entry into the post-war aviation boom with a mainstream flying car. Following the end of World War II, Hall and Tommy Thompson designed and developed the Convair Model 116 flying car featured in Popular Mechanics magazine in 1946. 
which consisted of a two-seat car body powered by a rear-mounted 26-horsepower engine. The Convair Model 118 Convair car was a prototype flying car of which two were built. Intended for mainstream consumers, two prototypes were built and flown. The prototype was lost after a safe but damaging low-fuel incident. Subsequently, the second prototype was rebuilt from the damaged aircraft and flown. By that time, little enthusiasm remained for the project and the program ended shortly thereafter. Number 8. The 1959 Ford Leva Car A wild concept from as far back as 1960, the Leva Car Mach 1 was the first full-scale wheelless vehicle developed by the Ford Motor Company utilizing air propulsion. It possessed a single-seat automobile which rode on pressurized air, not wheels. Its name was inspired by the speed of Mach 1, an aspiration speed not yet achieved by vehicles at the time. It used air pressure at a force of 15 to 100 psi to provide lift and propulsion. Ford Motor Car's Leva Car Mach 1 appeared in the Ford Rotunda in spring 1959. A full-size prototype, this was a one-man flying car that was levitated several inches off the ground by three powerful air jets located on the bottom of its chassis. Planned to be powered by a small-scale turbojet engine, the Leva car was purportedly designed to reach a top speed of nearly 500 miles per hour. Number 7. The 1966 Aero Car Aero Car International, often called the Taylor Aero Car, was an American rotable aircraft manufacturer designed and built by Moulton Taylor in Longview, Washington in 1949. Taylor's design of a rotable aircraft dates back to 1946. During a trip to Delaware, he met inventor Robert E. Fulton Jr., who had designed an earlier rotable airplane, the Amphibian. Taylor recognized that the detachable wings of Fulton's design would be better replaced by folding wings. His prototype aero car utilized folding wings that allowed the road vehicle to be converted into flight mode in five minutes by one person. When the rear license plate was flipped up, the operator could connect the propeller shaft and attach a pusher propeller. The same engine drove the front wheels through a three-speed manual transmission. When operated as an aircraft, the road transmission was simply left in neutral, though backing up during taxiing was possible by using the reverse gear. On the road, the wings and tail unit were designed to be towed behind the vehicle. Taylor also put the propeller on the back of the car so it would not have to be taken off when the aero car went on the road. Aero cars could drive up to 60 miles per hour and have a top airspeed of 110 miles per hour. Six models were built, however, the aero car never entered mass production. Number 6. The 1973 AVE Miser Could you have ever believed someone if they told you their lowly Ford Pinto could fly? I don't think so. The truth is, a Pinto can fly, regardless of what you might think. This is the story of how a man created one of the most amazing flying cars in history, and how that invention became the case and how that invention became the cause of his death. The prototypes of the Miser were made by sawing up a Cessna Skymaster and a Ford Pinto and fitting them together. The Skymaster's cabin and front engine were removed and the rest of the plane attached to the Pinto, with the wings sitting over the roof and the pusher engine snuggling up against the hatchback. The Pinto was backed into the airframe and four high-strength self-locking pins were used to hook everything together. On September 11, 1973, during a test flight, an air traffic controller who had been watching the Miser through his binoculars, about two minutes after takeoff, he saw the craft's right wing fold in. The Mizar twisted and then fell, with various parts and pieces flying off. Smolensky and Blake were both killed instantly in the blink of an eye. The Mizar prototype was destroyed and the men that created it were no more. The flying car was dead. Number 5. The Sky Commuter This concept is different. This actually looks cool. Why? Because it was designed by Boeing, an actual aircraft manufacturing company that knows a thing or two about flying machines. It's called the Sky Commuter and it was built in the 1980s. The thing has a tricycle layout and it was powered by an onboard gas turbine engine linked to three fans via a helicopter-based drive shaft. Forward movement was provided by the thrust exiting the exhaust by the tail of the car. Can I call it a car? 
Anyways, more than $6 million went into the program before it was cancelled. Of the three prototypes built, this is the sole remaining example. The engine nassle is empty except for a simulated fan assembly. The sky commuter is non-functional. Number 4. The M400 Sky Car Anyone can fly the sky car, the headline on the January 1991 cover of Popular Mechanics blared, teasing the possibility of a future where everyone could own their own flying car. That dream never came to fruition, but the original sky car can now be yours to own. Moeller International, the company that built the iconic vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, announced today that it is putting the M400 sky car up for sale on eBay. Don't just expect to use it for your daily commute. The engines to be used are being developed by an affiliate Moeller company called Freedom Motors. According to Moeller, the Sky Car combines the high-speed capabilities of a fixed-wing aircraft with the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities of a helicopter. Its ducted fans provide lift and propulsion without the dangers of exposed rotor blades and high-maintenance cost of rotary-wing aircraft. The vehicle employs state-of-the-art fly-by-wire computer technology to monitor, control, and maintain the stability of the aircraft while simultaneously making it simple and easy to operate. While having successfully completed several low-stakes tests, it is not approved for flight by the Federal Aviation Administration. Muller says that one condition of its sale is that it cannot be flown. Number 3. The Flying Maruti the first thing that strikes you about the Flying Maruti is the famous sports car DeLorean that was featured in the science fiction film Back to the Future. Flying Maruti is attempting something as futuristic as this and maybe even more. The unassuming Flying Maruti with four rotating blades parked next to combat planes grabbed many eyeballs at Aero India. A.K. Vishwanath, the man behind the garage venture, is currently working on the proof of concept of the Indian flying car, with a vertical liftoff and cruising capability. It's a long haul, I have spent 17 years developing the prototype, I have identified different pieces of the puzzle, he said. Vishwanath worked with Cadence Design System in the US before he put together a plan for his dream machine. Number 2. Terrafugia's Transition Rotable Aircraft one vehicle, two modes of travel. The transition seats two and converts from drive mode to flight mode in under a minute with just the push of a button. Eliminating the hassle of hangar storage, ground transportation, and aviation fuel, the transition fuels up with automotive gas and can be stored in your home garage. The idea of the transition rotable aircraft came about in 2006 when the Tranfugia team, a group of MIT-trained aeronautical engineers, yearned for an eco-friendly and cost-effective solution to the challenges private pilots face. Weather can be unpredictable, but that's no longer an issue with the transition rotable aircraft. With the push of a button, pilots can go from flying a plane to driving a car in 30 seconds flat. Number 1. The Aeromobile 3.0 the Aeromobile 3.0 flying car prototype was unveiled at the Pioneers Festival in Vienna, Austria on October 2014. Designed and manufactured by Slovakian company Aeromobile, the car can be used on the road and in the air, and can take off and land using any grass strip or paved surface. It started a flight testing program in real flight conditions in October 2014, and Aeromobile expects to obtain European certifications as per the existing car and airplane regulatory requirements for a small series category M1 car and light sport aircraft. So how was our top 12 most incredible flying cars? Have you picked your favorite one yet? Now just think, if you get on board with one of these planes and when land only your skeleton is found, the same bizarre phenomenon occurred with an airplane that landed with 92 skeletons on board. Click here to see what actually happened. <laughs>